So we're going to start by doing these questions that you've selected from question one, and then we're going to do some things from the mixed exercise. So for question D that we've got here, we have sec squared theta, 1 minus tan squared theta, and we're going to try and show that it's equal to sec 2 theta. Now, sometimes what's helpful here is to think what would sec 2 theta actually look like. Well, we know that sec 2 theta, and you might like to do this somewhere else on your page, sec 2 theta would be what, do we think? It's 1 over cos 2 theta. So we might be looking out for something that gets cos 2 theta in the denominator. If we can get to that, then that's going to be pretty good. If we have sec squared in the numerator, what can I do to that? I can change it to the denominator and put it as cos squared. So I can have 1 over cos squared theta. That is the sec squared theta. 1 minus tan squared theta, like this. And then it looks like my only real option here is going to be to expand these brackets at the bottom. So I have 1 over cos squared theta. And I get cos squared theta minus, sorry, cos squared theta multiplied by tan squared theta. Can you just think in your head, without even having to write it out, what is tan squared theta? Sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And then you're timesing it by cos squared theta. So it equals sine squared theta. So cos squared tan squared is sine squared. So you then get cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cos squared minus sine squared is? Cos is cos 2 theta. And 1 over cos 2 theta, that is sec 2 theta, which is the thing that we were aiming for. So these questions are often hard because you don't really know like where you're trying to go. But what you do try and uh, what you can try and do is maybe think, okay, well, sec two theta. I might give my brain a bit of uh, a helping hand here. I might write sec two theta as one over cos two theta to kind of help me go through that bit. The other one that I actually quite like, question E. I think question E is is pretty good. Is this is sort of testing your abilities to think about what needs to be done, what kinds of bits we've got going on here. So I have two sine cubed theta cos theta plus cos cubed theta sine theta. And we're going to try and work on this. Now, as mathematicians, I would want you to look at that statement that is written there. And I would want you to think, hmm, I probably would have done something to this. I wouldn't have written it like this. This isn't what I would have done. What do you think that could be done inside the brackets there that hasn't been done and really should have been done? Factorizing. Yeah, do you notice there's just so many things that look like we could have pulled out some common factors here? So what do these things have in common? They have sine theta, and they have a cos theta in common. So I'm going to pull out a sine theta and a cos theta from this. If I pull a sine theta and cos theta out, I'm left with? I'm left with a sine squared theta for this bit. And if I pull a sine theta and a cos theta, that's a cubed there, I'm left with a cos squared theta. And we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. And 2 sine theta cos theta is? sine 2 theta. So it's literally just a factorizing kind of one that we've got there. F, though, this is where things maybe are going to get a bit trickier. So we have got sine 3 theta over sine theta minus cos 3 theta over cos theta. And we're going to hope that it just all collapses down to give us the answer 2. Who remembers what one of the original tips was that we had when we first started doing proving identities? What was one of the original tips that we had? Try make it the same denominator. Make it the same denominator. Get rid of the two fractions and put them together into one thing. And so we're going to do this multiplying bit where we have that one times that one, that one times that one, and the common denominator of sine theta cos theta. So the common denominator is sine theta cos theta, and the numerator is sine 3 theta cos theta minus, because it was a minus in there, cos 3 theta sine theta. This is really tricky, but you need to think, what on earth does this top bit look similar to? It should look similar to something that you've seen. It's the addition formula. It's sine cos, cos sine. The arguments have switched. So it's cos theta minus theta all over sine theta, cos theta. That's pretty tricky to spot that this is the addition formula in reverse, but this is why people find this module difficult, because you've got to spot lots of things. Now, I can just simplify this. 3 theta minus theta is obviously 2 theta over sine theta, cos theta. 
Well, we've got a mixture of arguments here, so I'm going to work on this numerator. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. We have the denominator of sine theta cos theta. They cancel, and we get the answer 2. You don't like that one? Nope, it's hard. Pulls a lot of knowledge together. This, this question, for me, is a good representation of where you need to be at in those few months before the exam. You need to be so good on this topic that all of those things, you're just like, okay, yeah, tip, put them together. Okay, good, this looks like the addition formula. Okay, good, this simplifies. Okay, I know the double angle formula. Okay, it cancels. All of those things individually I think you can do, but it's everything all at the same time. It's overwhelming. But you will get better at that. You just will. And then we're going to do H, which is sec theta minus 1 over sec theta plus 1. Yeah, I think we did, didn't we? So I am going to ask Haroon what he did on this one, because I want him to give me a hint to get me started. What was the first thing you did for this? Um, I in terms of cos. Yep, that's usually a good tip for this. So we're going to write it as sec theta is 1 over cos theta minus 1, and 1 over cos theta plus 1. What did you then do? Yeah, if you times the top and bottom by cos theta, what we're going to do there is remove a lot of those fractions that we have. So I'm going to multiply this by cos theta to get 1. I'm going to multiply this by cos theta to get minus cos theta. Then I'm going to multiply this by cos theta to get 1, and the next bit by cos theta to get this bit that we've got here like this. And we're trying to get this to be, what are we trying to get to be? Tan squared theta over 2. Come on, Haroon, we'll keep going with you. Um, so you don't need, you have to get a theta over 2 because then it's a double angle. Double yeah. So the really tricky thing to spot here is our original arguments that we've got are all in theta, and then this one is theta over 2. So at some point, we want to use the double angle, and the double angle will take you from theta, and it will change it to theta over 2. So that's the weird kind of thing that we have. That means that we're going to either use that cos theta is either 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. That's not normally what the formula looks like. The formula, how does the formula usually look for the double angle formula for cos? OK, so we also have cos squared theta over 2 minus sine squared theta over 2. And we obviously have the other one, which is 2 cos squared theta over 2 minus 1. But I just want to say, how does, this look, how does this look different to the usual way we remember this? We normally have 2 theta here and theta here. But we can have theta and theta over 2 as long as the first argument is double the other one. And the reason we're having to do it for this one is because the thing that we're aiming for has got the half theta over 2, has got theta over 2. So we're now going to replace cos theta sensibly with one of these ones. Um, I think the best one is going to be the top one, because you're going to then have the minus 1. So it's going to be 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. This is similar to one we did do before. And the bottom one, I think the best one to use is this one, because you're going to then get the minus 1 cancelling. So that's 2 cos squared theta over 2 minus 1. When I expand the brackets on the top, I get 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared theta over 2. And on the bottom, the 1 and the minus 1 cancel, and you have 2 cos squared theta over 2. That 1 minus 1 is 0, so you just have 2 sine squared theta over 2 over 2 cos squared theta over 2. The 2s cancel, and you get tan squared theta over 2. Now, the thing I don't like about this question, which is so stupid why we don't like this, I don't like the fact that it's got theta over 2 and theta. If the whole question was 2 theta here and here, and it was just asking for us to get tan squared theta, for me, there's just something about my brain that would just find that easier. But it's still the exact same relationship. Instead of going from a 2 theta to a theta, we're going from a theta to a theta over 2. For me, just these formulae are kind of harder to use just because we're not familiar with them with these fractional kind of bits in here as well. 
So what I'm going to ask is we're going to actually do some questions from the mixed exercise this time. We're going to go to mixed exercise 7. And I think it is questions 21. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Um, the reason I want to pick them from the mixed exercise is I just kind of like the style of the questions that they've got from there. And question 21, be warned, it doesn't just use the double angle formula. It also uses the addition formulae as well. Okay, and then we're going to look at some modeling in about half an hour after you've done some of these questions.